In this alternate Earth, everyone gets a superpower when they turn 18, from flying to controlling the elements. However Jen is 25 and she still hasn't found hers, which makes her very bitter. During a job interview, she discovers the boss's power is forcing people to tell the truth, causing her to say many embarrassing things and miss the chance. In the evening, Jen hooks up with her casual partner Luke. As soon as they're done, Luke waits for Jen to go to the bathroom and flies out of the window. Jen feels unappreciated because he always does the same thing. The next day, Jen's roommate Carrie is at her job in a lawyer's office. Her power allows her to let the souls of dead people take over her body for a few minutes, so lawyers use her to solve cases. Unfortunately this causes clients to get mad at her for getting in the way. In the afternoon, Jen arrives home and finds a lost cat at the door, so she lets him in. Then she sees Carrie's boyfriend Cash trying on a homemade superhero suit and makes fun of him for it. Embarrassed, Cash uses his power to reverse time and quickly closes the door so Jen won't see him. Soon Carrie also arrives and cries while sharing how tired she's of clients taking it out on her so Jen tells her to quit, but Carrie can't because she must support Cash until he finds a job. Then to lighten the mood Carrie channels Hitler so they can mock him. Later Carrie has a date with Gordon, who refuses to shake her hand without a glove because he can make people instantly climax with just a touch. After a nice dinner together, they go to Jen's place yet Gordon refuses to use his power, wanting to prove he can be good for a woman naturally. He kisses her with plastic between their faces and does the naughty with the gloves on but he's awful at it, so Jen has to fake it. Then Gordon goes to sleep after putting a pillow barrier between him and Jen to avoid touching her in his sleep. Meanwhile Cash and Carrie are out in the street when suddenly an invisible man grabs Carrie's phone and asks for her purse too. Instead of reversing time, Cash throws his wallet at him and grabs Carrie to run away. Afterward Cash admits that fighting off the robber felt good, so he wants to become an actual superhero. The next morning Jen wakes up and decides to try to touch Gordon, but freezes when she sees the cat jump on the bed. The cat ends up touching Gordon first and wakes him up by screaming out his passion. Disgusted, Gordon goes away, telling Jen they aren't compatible. Afterward over breakfast, the trio decides to keep the cat and named him Gizzelord for what he did on the bed. In the evening, Jen takes a cab to her half-sister's birthday party. The driver has the power to tell when someone will die yet refuses to give her the details, only saying she must watch out for bears. During the trip she gets a call from her father, who reminds her to be a good sister. In the house, Jen meets with her mom Mary, who has the power to command technology yet she can't control it, and her partner Ian, who can sense emotions. Jen's half-sister Andy is turning 18 tonight and Jen triggers an argument by pointing out she may not get any powers, so Ian has to use his ability to defuse the situation. When Andy finally blows the candles, she waits for her powers to emerge, yet nothing happens. A smug Jen enjoys the moment, however when Andy opens the fridge, she tears the door off. Excited, Andy begins showing off her new super strength, so a bitter Jen leaves while drinking. At that moment Jen decides to visit Luke, who has been ignoring her texts. She finds him having dinner with another woman who has the power to shapeshift yet she barely uses it, implying she's naturally beautiful which annoys Jen. Afterward Luke takes the girl out for a flight, so Jen forces him to do the same for her. The trip is short and Luke leaves Jen on the street, saying their thing is over because Jen can't love anyone if she doesn't love herself. On her way home, Jen calls her dad to hear some words of comfort. However when she arrives, it's revealed that her dad is dead and Carrie summons his ghost when Jen needs the support. The next day, Jen and Carrie go to the Discovery Clinic to learn about treatments that may help her awaken her powers. However it's all incredibly expensive and she can't afford it. That night while Jen is sleeping, Gizzelord suddenly transforms into a human, only to quickly become a cat again before Jen can see him. Jen's next idea is to unleash her powers through stress, so she goes to a restaurant with her friends to eat the spiciest dish on the menu. Unfortunately she can't handle it and runs to the store to drink a whole bottle of milk, which is seen by Luke and the security cameras making the moment extra embarrassing. The following day, Carrie takes Jen to the dentist to try stress again. Jen tries to escape, but Carrie drags her inside and they start hearing ominous music. The dentist's power is to make people generate their own soundtrack and when she shows how gentle she is, Jen's music changes from ominous to relaxing. Unfortunately the dentist announces Jen's teeth need fillings, and her music becomes scary again. To calm her down, the dentist gives her some medicine. Meanwhile Cash contacts an agency to put up an ad asking for superheroes. In the other room, Gizzelord transforms into a man again, but he has trouble walking like a person. He scratches the door to get Cash's attention, but when Cash goes to check on him, Gizzelord is a cat again. Back to Jen, she finishes her appointment in a very woozy state. Carrie takes her outside and they suddenly see a masked man approach them to grab Jen and push her into the trunk. This is Cash, who made this fake kidnapping plan with Carrie to add more stress. The couple decides to stop for lunch and let Jen suffer a bit, but Jen is so woozy that she leaves a voicemail for Luke saying how much she loves him. Cash and Carrie are so distracted that they don't notice the car is being towed until it's too late. Carrie calls Jen to ask for her pin location and as the couple rushes to the car lot, Cash admits the vehicle belongs to his mother and he doesn't have a license, so he can't retrieve it legally. 
they end up sneaking into the impound lot only to realize they don't have the car key, and to make it worse, the effects of the medicine and so Jen starts panicking. They have no choice but to call Andy, who smugly demands Jen to ask for the favor nicely. Jen pretends to be nice and Andy proceeds to rip the trunk hood off easily. Then Jen tries to beat her up, so Carrie has to keep the sisters apart. Suddenly they hear a car horn and the girls are horrified to see Mary and Ian have come to pick them up. While Mary scolds her daughter, Jen remembers that she left a voicemail for Luke and asks her mom to delete it. Mary tries but she still can't control her power and ends up playing the message through the car's speakers. Andy suggests that Jen should spam Luke to distract him from the voicemail. When Jen gets home, she starts taking naughty pictures to send to Luke. Suddenly she sees Gizzalord transforming into a man and she panics, running out of the room. However she also wonders if she has the power to transform animals by showing them her chest. Her friends join her and the guy explains he's a shapeshifter that got stuck in his cat form. Then he hugs Cash, happy that humans can see his real face again while also revealing he has amnesia. The trio continues to call him Gizzalord and asks a few questions, hearing the few things he manages to remember and concluding he's been a cat for around three years. Jen decides they must keep him until he recovers his memory. At that moment Jen gets a text from Luke, who has seen the pictures but also heard the voicemail, so he thinks Jen is weird. Later that night, Jen goes for a walk and sees a dog, so she flashes her chest to test her theory. The dog stays the same and its owner ends up seeing her as well. The next morning, the friends learn that Gizzalord has forgotten how to use lots of basic household objects, so he'll require lots of help. At work, Carrie channels the soul of a famous singer, who turns down a contract to get her music in elevators on cruise ships and instead asks to come back to the industry. After the meeting, the manager makes Carrie an offer, she could work with them by channeling dead celebrities to make them sing again, which Carrie happily accepts. When she makes it to the recording studio, she calls Jen and asks her to come over for moral support, promising her to pay her for it. This gives Jen an idea and she shows up at the studio pretending to be Carrie's manager, which allows her to get Carrie a juicy deal. When it's time to record, Carrie channels the singer they want, only to discover he's hard to work with and very misogynistic. The ghost even asks Jen to help him remember his lyrics, and after he disappears, Carrie searches for his songs only to learn they're all racist and misogynistic too. Carrie is uncomfortable and wants to quit, but Jen convinces her to stay for the money. Hoping the ghost's bad memory won't notice, Carrie changes the songs a bit to make them less offensive, but sadly the singer hates the nice message and makes a huge scene. Carrie and Jen are both immediately fired. Back in the house, Cash interviews a bunch of candidates for his superhero team. Seb can summon sea creatures but not control them, and he makes a fish fly through the window. Since his family is rich, Cash recruits him anyway. Ade can move through solid objects yet ends up with his hand stuck inside a wall, but he's also recruited. A woman has magnet powers but ends up attracting every object in the house over her lack of control, so Cash turns her down together with the guy who can transform anything in a PDF and the person whose eye lasers do nothing. Randall can use his rear to 3D print objects, which he demonstrates by making a small figurine. Finally Gregor has super speed, proving it by bringing a postcard from the British Museum in just a second. Afterward Cash is getting ready for the first official meeting when Gizzalord suddenly brings him a dead pigeon. Not wanting him to embarrass him in front of the others, Cash sends Gizzalord to do the groceries. At the store, Gizzalord is overwhelmed by everything, and seeing the female products makes him faint. The clerk immediately helps him out and gives him a book on women's anatomy to better understand the products. Back to Cash, he's meeting with his new superhero buddies and notices Gregor takes over writing on the board. Gregor also has a lot to say, and Cash feels like he's trying to steal the leadership from him. After Randall makes a marker with his backside, they discuss how they'd act if they save a woman, and Gregor says he should be the leader because he respects all ladies while Cash claims he's the better choice because he's an expert on women's anatomy. Seb draws a woman's privates on the board and asks Cash to find the happy spot, which Cash doesn't know. Luckily Gizzalord comes back and helps him, so Cash stays as the leader. When Carrie and Jen arrive home, they hear some weird noises and find Cash and Gizzalord playing a game they built with the lady products, so they all play together. Sometime later, the magnet woman comes back because she forgot her umbrella and suddenly she sticks to Gizzalord, meaning he's microchipped. The group decides to take Gizzalord to see Dr. Doolittle, a vet capable of communicating with animals. His stress levels are pretty high because he's constantly hearing their cries, so he uses headphones for silence. When Jen brings Gizzalord, Doolittle immediately finds the microchip and gives them the old owner's address. Later, Cash and Carrie are getting down to business when suddenly Cash receives a text from his new team about a mission. He tells Carrie they can finish this another time and Carrie feels hurt, so Cash rewinds time to say something nicer, yet he leaves anyway. To distract herself, Carrie goes to Jen's room to start cleaning, and her frustration makes Jen realize that Cash hasn't satisfied Carrie in a while. At that moment Jen discovers Luke left a sock and sends him a picture of it, she also finds Gordon's glove. Jen points out Carrie should go see Gordon and ask him to use his powers but Carrie refuses to cheat. Afterward, Jen and Gizzalord finally visit the address from the microchip, only to learn that the owner is dead. 
At that moment they hear Tito the Pomeranian bark and Gizalord describes him as evil, making them realize he's met him before. The duo decides to steal Tito from his owner and take him to Doolittle, who translates the dog's message. Tito hates Gizalord and won't share any information until they give him his dream day out. Doolittle needs a break too, so he joins them. The group ends up in a club, where Tito enjoys getting lots of attention from beautiful women. The others drink a lot and even consume some uppers. When Jan and Gizalord get a private dance from a woman who duplicates herself, they feel too uncomfortable and hold hands for mutual support. Soon Doolittle is so intoxicated that he starts harassing the dancers and the bouncers kick the group out. Thankfully Tito is very happy and shares that he used to run into Gizalord all the time in an alley behind a famous pub. Then he asks them to let him go so he can finally be free, but as soon as takes a few steps, he's hit by a car. Then Jan and Gizalord go to the alley to look for clues and Gizalord shocks himself by reciting the pub's menu. Jen thinks they should go inside and find the landlady, but Gizalord panics and runs away. Meanwhile Cash's superhero team tries to help a person on the street, but instead they scare her and accidentally activate her goo power, which makes her mad at them. At that moment a man asks for help because he's been locked out of his apartment, so they choose Ade for the mission. He has to take his clothes off to use his power, and when he starts going through the wall, he ends up getting stuck with his rear in display. Gregor decides to leave Cash with Ade and takes the others to a bar. Moments later Cash gets a call from Gregor asking for his help. Cash rushes to find the team, leaving Ade alone. The group is currently in a tough fight outside the bar and Gregor wants Cash to rewind time to avoid it, but Cash can only go back for 10 seconds and it isn't enough no matter how many times he tries. Suddenly a thug goes after Cash, who pretends he doesn't know the others and runs away. At home, Carrie finally snaps over the lack of satisfaction and goes to see Gordon with the excuse of returning his glove. She begins crying and begs for his help, but when Gordon reaches out, Carrie admits she can't do this. To apologize, she calls Gordon a hero for helping her, which puts Gordon in a much better mood and he starts helping other women from then on. While Carrie reunites with Cash, Jen finds Gizalord outside their apartment and tells him that the pub was a dead end. They bond over their fears of discovering who they truly are and when they're about to come closer, they're interrupted by a text from Luke asking for his sock. The next day, Addy is still stuck on the wall for everyone to see. In the meantime, Jan and Carrie go to their former high school to attend Andy's graduation, and Carrie can't stop imagining what it would have been like to have the perfect graduation ceremony. When the family is approached by another student's mother, Mary pretends that Jen can read minds, but the lie backfires when Jen laughs as the woman tries to telepathically tell her that a teacher died. At that moment Ian senses that someone nearby is distressed, so he blindfolds himself to enhance his power and find that person. Frustrated, Jen drags Carrie into a closet to drink the alcohol they hid there many years ago. Suddenly they panic when hear the voice of Rebecca, the girl that used to harass them in high school. However she's now very nice and even works as a teacher. Rebecca explains that she has the power to revisit memories, which has made her realize how horrible she used to be and made her a better person. Jen doesn't believe her and asks for money as an apology. After Rebecca pays, she notices that Carrie is very tense and takes her to the staff room to share some tea. Now they're alone, Rebecca can point out that Jen was an awful friend to Carrie and proves it by showing her some school memories. The day Carrie was supposed to receive an award, Jen made her stay with her as moral support while she took a pregnancy test. Later on graduation day, Jen didn't want her mom to know she dropped out of school and borrowed Carrie's graduation gown but didn't return it in time, so Carrie's picture was ruined. Rebecca tells Carrie she needs to stand up for herself. Meanwhile Jen hides in the bathroom to drink and overhears Andy talking to her girlfriend. It turns out Andy lied about getting into the conservatoire and she isn't dating her girlfriend anymore, both consequences of her super strength. As soon as the ex leaves, Jen confronts Andy, who agrees to do anything if Jen keeps the secret. The sisters return to the party and Jen forces Andy to do the family dance, which embarrasses her in front of everyone. Next, Jen gives Andy an embarrassing speech to read. When Andy accepts her award, she reads the awful words and gets furious so she decides to mock her sister back, causing Jen to reveal her secrets. A devastated Andy runs away in tears and Ian realizes that the distressed person he was sensing had been his own daughter. Then it's time for Carrie to give her own speech, but she can barely speak because Jen's family is arguing in the next room and it can be heard from the auditorium. Carrie realizes Rebecca had been right about Jen and leaves to hide in the bathroom. At that moment Jen comes in and starts ranting about her life, causing Carrie to finally snap and call her out on her selfishness, pointing out that not having powers isn't an excuse to be a bad person. An argument ensues and Carrie ends up running away, leaving Jen crying alone. At the apartment, Gizalord finds a depressed Cash in the tub, feeling guilty because of how he acted last night. Gizalord brushes his hair and shows him videos of penguins falling over to cheer him up, but as they browse the video website, they discover a recording of Cash running from the fight has gone viral. Cash's mood immediately tanks again. During the following days, Jan and Carrie won't talk to each other, so Gizalord has to act as their middleman. One morning, Jan finds red dots on most apartment objects and learns that Carrie has labeled her things to forbid Jen from using them. 
Since she's rarely bought anything for their home, Jan can only eat a red onion for breakfast. Afterward Jan goes to a discovery clinic, determined to get those tests done. While filling out the paperwork she meets Hannah, another girl in her 20s who doesn't have powers. The girls go to a bar and bond over their powerless experiences. Later they see a woman who can change her hair color, and they're so bitter that they go into the bathroom and cut her ponytail as a prank because her power can grow it back. However they soon discover they cut the wrong woman's hair, so they have to run away. At the apartment, Carrie finds Cash's embarrassing video and tells him to apologize to his friends to start over. Cash likes the idea and leaves to search for his teammates, so Gizzalord uses the chance to ask Carrie why she and Jen are fighting. While Carrie rants about Jen, she finds their puzzle collection and thinks about all their happy times playing, lamenting not finishing them together. When Jen comes back, she says she's got a new best friend and claims that the jigsaw collection is hers, so Carrie retaliates by refusing to summon Jen's dad anymore. Meanwhile Cash visits Seb, who is going to Florida to forget about what happened. Cash apologizes and gives him some chocolate, making Seb cry and hug him as he requests to come along. Then Cash and Seb visit Ade, who accepts Cash's apology and agrees they should bring the team back together. Next they visit Gregor and Cash tries to apologize, only to discover Gregor and Randall have formed their own team with the other rejects. Gregor starts making fun of his previous teammates, and a furious Cash challenges him to a fight. Since Gregor has super speed, Cash loses pretty quickly, so in the end he decides to rewind time and punch Gregor as soon as he opens the door. Then he invites Randall to join them. Later Jen meets with Hannah and is shocked to hear she won't go to the clinic anymore. The girls decide to spend the day having fun together and discuss the idea of forming a group for those with no powers while shooting toy darts at flying people. At that moment Luke flies by and Jen hides the toy gun, which upsets Hannah. To make it up to her, Jen agrees to sneak into the clinic to trash the offices, even relieving herself on a desk. Suddenly Hannah disappears and discovers she has teleportation powers, and when Jen gets jealous, Hannah promises nothing will change between them. However when a guard finds them, Hannah immediately disappears. Afterward at the apartment, Jen checks social media and is upset to discover Hannah is hanging out with Luke. Gizzalord tells her that Carrie wants to finish the puzzle together, pointing out they should make up. Jen goes to see Carrie and they start working on the puzzle, starting in an awkward mood but slowly patching up their friendship. The next day, Carrie takes Jen to the clinic so she can finally finish the paperwork. Trying to be less selfish, Jen asks Carrie about her problems, and Carrie confesses that since Cash has his team back, their relationship is suffering. Afterward Jen tries to sell her eggs to get the money for the treatment, but nobody wants to buy them. Watching Gizzalord gives her an idea, he should enter a cat show and win, thanks to his human intelligence. However Gizzalord refuses to transform because he doesn't want to get stuck again. Meanwhile Carrie goes back to her job at the firm and channels Charles II, who won't stop flirting with her. Carrie is so flattered and fascinated by him that later at home she summons him again and they spend the whole afternoon chatting. She uses a mirror to show Charles how she looks and he flatters her even more. Afterward she tries to have a whole date day with Cash, but he has a mission and promises to see her later. Disappointed, Carrie decides to take Charles' ghost to the museum, where he sees the paintings they've done of him. Charles starts flirting with her and Carrie almost kisses his portrait, but a guard stops her just in time. Carrie goes home and hears Jen scream as she discovers Gizzalord has eaten cat food to transform again. He also left a recording agreeing to be taken to the cat show. When they try to register, Jen uses the cat name from the chip, and everyone gets excited because this cat was always a hit in this contest. Jen searches old show videos and discovers Gizzalord's talent segment used to be dancing. She tries to make him do the moves now to practice, but Gizzalord doesn't understand her and she thinks of giving up. However she listens to Gizzalord's supportive message again and decides to make him proud, so she makes a plan. When it's time to perform, Jen tries to make the cat jump through a hoop, but he doesn't obey. Then she starts dancing, and Gizzalord becomes human to join her. They do a wonderful dance together and have fun, but the judges don't approve and they have to leave. On their way out, Gizzalord tries to apologize, but Jen kisses him instead. In an abandoned building, Cash's team is looking for some dealers and discovers Gregor's team is there too. An argument ensues until they hear footsteps, so everyone rushes to hide in a cupboard. Hours pass and the teams won't come out because Cash doesn't want to share the glory, so the others make fun of him for choosing his own ego over going to his date. At the apartment, Carrie is having dinner with Charles II and having a great time. When things are about to get dirty, Cash shows up and announces he's quitting the superhero business, which makes Carrie happy. However when Cash chooses pizza and YouTube again, she begins to wonder if they really are a good match. The next day, the newspapers reveal both superhero teams work together to defeat the dealers. Jen wakes up to discover Gizzalord is painting the bedroom wall, assuming they're a couple now that will live together. After explaining to him this is moving too fast, Jan and Carrie have a chat. Jen gets to talk to her dad again, then she advises Carrie to be honest with Cash. Carrie tries to break up with him, but he announces he's throwing a party for her so she saves it for later. 
In the evening, Carrie is really touched to see Cash has made all the decorations to celebrate his beloved girlfriend, but Jen reminds her to stand up for herself. Then Jen is shocked to discover Mary is there criticizing every aspect of the room and Jen's looks. Frustrated, she sends her to talk to another guest who turns out to be Gordon looking cooler and more confident. Mary mingles around and ends up chatting to Gizzelord, who tells her Jen can't afford the clinic. A hurt Mary can't believe her daughter wouldn't share that with her family. Meanwhile Carrie finally tells Cash that she feels like she's his mom more than his girlfriend. Cash wants to know how to fix it, so Carrie tells him to get a job. Then he rewinds time and before she can talk to him, he pretends he's on the phone arranging an interview, impressing her. However as soon as she's out of sight, Cash hides in the bathroom with Randall to panic because he's been avoiding the breakup talk. It turns out Cash has been awake for 28 hours and turned back time every time Carrie tried to break up with him. Randall gives him an energy drink to keep his power active, then the duo goes out to buy lots of cans. Jen watches them from afar until she bumps into Luke, who is worried because she has been ignoring his texts. Suddenly Gizzelord interrupts them and introduces himself as Jen's boyfriend, so she drags him away to scold him for going too fast and says they need some time off. At that moment Cash tells her someone is in her room, and Jen rushes in to discover her mom hacking into her computer. An argument ensues over their disastrous relationship, but things calm down when the topic of Jen's dead dad comes up. Feeling guilty, Jen asks Mary to stay. In the meantime Cash tries to dance with Carrie, who notices a dead flower in his pocket. Her own flower is still fine, which makes him realize Cash has been rewinding time a lot. Carrie hides with Jen and they start ranting about Cash, unaware that Gizzelord is leaving the apartment for good. Jen tells Carrie about the energy drinks, so Carrie goes to the bathroom to empty the cans into the toilet while Jen sends Cash to watch her. Crying, Carrie finally breaks up with him and no matter how many times Cash rewinds, he can't prevent it from happening. Back to Jen, she gets excited when Luke offers to take her flying, but he refuses to touch her in front of everyone and takes her outside. Then he starts complaining about Gizzelord, and Jen realizes he's just jealous. She defends Gizzelord and realizes how much he means to her, so she dumps Luke and returns to the party. Jen gets desperate when she can't find Gizzelord anywhere and goes outside to search for him, running after a cat down the street. As it starts raining, Jen apologizes to the cat and asks him to be her boyfriend, only for Gizzelord to appear behind her. After the couple shares a passionate kiss, they return to the apartment, and Jen introduces Gizzelord as her boyfriend. Mary wants to help her daughter with the clinic but it's too expensive for her too, so Gordon cuts in and offers the money. Thanks to selling his services, he's loaded now. The girls hug to celebrate and Gizzelord hugs Gordon, causing him to stain his pants. The next morning, Gizzelord goes to the grocery store and a girl points at him, saying he's her daddy. Her mother drops her groceries as she recognizes his face.